at SCNM, we have research relationships with various academic institutions, such as the Biodesign Institute at ASU, Arizona State University. And we also have collaborations or relationships with private companies. And our research portfolio, like many of the other naturopathic medical schools, is quite diverse. It goes from the bench top to the bedside in that we can start with a project that looks at the smallest piece of the human body, perhaps genetic expression. And then we can carry that, use that information, and carry that through to a therapeutic application and begin to test that in the human body. There's a lot of herbal remedies out there that are uh, known to enhance immune function. And that's based on thousands of years of their use, things like echinacea, and astragalus, um, many of these herbs like that. And yet the mechanism of how they truly affect the body is not well understood. And so we are actually, uh, through the Southwest College and Arizona State University Biodesign Institute, we've actually been able to um, use uh, molecular biology methods known as microarray micro technology where we can really take cells and take patients and isolate their cells and look at the entire gene expression going on within those cells. So we can actually look at immune cells, uh, whether they're being turned on or off, what genes are being turned on and off, and look at all 30,000 genes within the cell and see what's going on and really understand the true process of not only what's going on inside one cell, but the interplay between all the immune cells in, in the whole body and really try to decipher what's going on with how, this, how these immune stimulatory herbs are really working in the body. And which is just a hallmark to being able to um, not only understand how to treat patients, but it may also add into, as we understand more about the immune system, which patients may be the best ones to treat with different herbs. Um, another research project we currently are going on with is to try to improve on uh, bioterrorism and uh, things like smallpox and that sort of thing. And at the Southwest College, we've actually rediscovered, in a sense, uh, an herb that was used in the 1800s by the native uh, Indians for the treatment of smallpox. And it's somewhat been forgotten about for the last two uh, centuries or so. And with the threat of bioterrorism coming back and, and is an obvious threat, we've resurrected this herb in a sense and really tried to break it down about how it's functioning. And with the studies we've been doing so far, is we've really been able to rediscover this herb and show its effectiveness toward uh, pathogens such as smallpox and help combat the, the threat of bioterrorism.